Hi guys, Goose here. Welcome to the Guitar Show. Today's video is all about the Armin Dynasonic pickups and my Telecaster. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so there you can see it's a really beautiful big sound. Um, I'm playing there in the middle position. So let me just take a, a swig of coffee. That is wonderful. Right, okay, so basically, let's just talk about the Diamonds first. These were actually introduced by Diamond Row. They were called labeled Diamond Row in the 1950s, actually 1949. And I think when they first came out, they were called um, Diamond 200 pickups. All, but around the same time, they were also called Diamond 2000. So it's a little bit of confusion depending on whose um, kind of account of it you want to uh, believe. So whatever. Um, they later became known as Diamond Dynasonics. And then the last name was a Diamond Fiddle Tone. And they were used in Gretsch guitars from the 1950s onwards. 1950 actually. And they were also used in Guild guitars as well. And you can find a special gold version on the Epiphones as well. There's a beautiful kind of, I think it's a Zephyr Deluxe Archtop guitar, which has the gold versions of these, which are amazing. Um, these are pretty expensive. They're going, you can get them on Reverb and eBay from the 1950s. They're hard to, a little bit hard to find, especially with the white bobbins as I've got here. Um, but they're, you know, I can't, I wouldn't give you a price, but... Um, you know, you can find them. They're, it's possible to find them. And the reason to find them is they do sound absolutely spectacular and very unique. They're not like a P90, although some people say they are the precursor to a P90. I don't think that's the case. Um, but they do sound absolutely amazing. Um, they output about 7, 7 to 7.5K. You've got to be careful with the magnets. Yeah, our Nico magnets, they're pretty strong, so you don't want to have them too close to the strings. Otherwise, they'll stop the vibration. These ones, as you can see, have got white um, baker light bobbins but you also get the more common black ones which were used um, specifically on the Gretsch actually um, although I think there's some Gretsches with the white bobbins and I think the white bobbin ones were used more on the Guild guitars okay uh, another sort of thing to mention is they got 0.43 gauge wire if that means anything to you guys doesn't to me but you know um, and what else yeah there's two models one was for the bridge which was a taller model and one was for the um, neck which was a sh more shallow um, model and you can see here that I've actually got the two different um, models on this guitar I'm going to talk about this guitar in a moment um, another thing to worth to point out is that the, you've got lots of repros and, and Fender actually came out with another version of these on their Diamond guitars which were made I think in Korea if I'm not mistaken they're very good quality. You can find them on eBay and Reverb and you can get Starfire copies and um, so forth. And basically those guitars came with a what was called a, a Diamond 2K pickup. So I guess that's kind of a more ver modern version. I'm going to flash up a picture of the construction of this pickup. And these are the original ones in this Telecaster. And you can see that they, they, they have quite a bit of depth to them with the kind of pulley system to raise and lower the magnets. The Diamond 2Ks, however, do not have that feature. And apparently the 2K versions sound more like a P90 pickup. Okay, the reason this guitar came into being was um, due to a guitarist by the name of Enrico Ciacci. I think I've got his name right, it's an Italian name. And um, he was one of the three sort of pop famous guitarists that played on those spaghetti westerns made in the 19, I think the 1960s. Um, or maybe late 50s I, I'm pretty sure they were early 60s but anyway could be wrong here um, but we're talking the good the bad and the ugly and 
um, for a few dollars more or fistful of dollars. Or those kind of spaghetti western films with Clint Eastwood. I love absolutely love those films. The soundtracks were amazing, and 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 like I said, um, Enrico was one of those guitar players on those soundtracks. So I'm going to flash up Enrico uh, in recent times with this beautiful red Telecaster, and I saw him playing a version of. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, and it was just like the tone that he had was incredible. Now, on this that particular guitar, I don't know if he had the Diamond Two Ks or some replica. I don't know because the replicas are made by um, Samuel Duncan, and TV Jones makes his version, and I think even um, uh, who not Lola, maybe Lola make them. Um, Mojo Pickups in the UK make them. Lindy Freeland make them. So lots of companies make um, these replicas of these. So it could be that he was using a replica, it could be an original. But anyway, it started my pathway onto, an, um, onto these pickups. And then I played a Guild guitar, which had the original 1950s. And I was totally blown away. And that's why the idea came for this Telecaster. And uh, those of you who know the channel would have noticed that I had a guide tone go fall in the neck. And really that was just um, whilst I was waiting to get hold of two um, original 1950s Diamonds. And you can see here, if I do a close-up of this guitar, that I've had to route, or well, the bass gallery in Camden have actually, in London here, have routed a bit of wood there to fit this um, bridge one in. Obviously, the neck one is shallower, so the routing is not so deep. Um, and uh, so you really need to get professional, I think, to fit these pickups in. However, if you get the 2K ones, you might actually get away with um, resting them on the body or with just a very shallow route. So that might be something to think about. Like I said, the P9, sorry, the um, Diamond 2K ones may sound a little bit like a P90 rather than these old ones. So you really want to do a bit of research and make sure that if you want to get a sound of the 1950s like these ones here, then maybe um, Samuel Duncan or TV Jones do a more accurate um, construction, you know. Um, now, there's another guitarist around 2007, I think it was, maybe later. Um, amazing jazz guitarist, Bill Frizzell. And he had a short scale Telecaster made for him. And so when I saw that and, and Rico's Telecaster, I was just like, I've got to build myself one. And so that's really where this started. I put the Bigsby on because it's, you know, having a Gretsch and a Guild sort of vibe with that. Um, you know, in combination with these pickups, it, it's really, and you know, the familiarity from myself playing a Telecaster, you know, it's a very light instrument. It's, um, you know, you can put it on your back and travel quite easily. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of a insight onto this Telecaster. I'll tell you what I've got on it. So we've got here, we've got a Bigsby, USA made Bigsby. We've got a Mastery Bridge, which I really recommend. I've put a short, it's a short little bridge um, because I, I ha we had the route with the um, Diamond so that it kind of just fitted in there quite neatly. Um, and then um, this is a Callahan 50 scratch plate, just one ply, just thought that looked cool. These knobs are from uh, an original Valco lap steel, sort of adds to the vibe. We've got a Dublier green capacitor in there for you guys. It's quite a big one, and it's a really nice for mellowing these pickups out, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Brazilian rosewood neck, 6100 fret wire, as you can see here, beautiful flame maple. And we've got the Shala Elite tuners to round it off. This actually neck was made in by Robert Gilmore. So shout out to Robert Gilmore. He makes fantastic guitar necks and, and whole guitars, actually. This body is from MJT, and it was completely mint when I got it. Um, but it's cracked and relicked really nice naturally. I haven't relicked it. It's just everyday use. And that's basically the guitar. So let's talk about these pickups. Now, I haven't really adjusted these pickups because I've only had this guitar back from the shop for a few days now. Um, what you've got to do is re you've got to really have a good capacitor when you're using these pickups, in my opinion, because you're going to be using the tone to roll off the highs a lot. Okay, so let's look at the bridge pickup. Um, and you're going to hear how qu it's quite trebly. So we're going to have this wide open. We're on the bridge. Check this out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, if I'm going to just roll that tone down. You can see that the, you know, you really need your capacitor to be something that you, you know, it's going to sound, make the pickup sound beautiful because you're going to be using it a lot, especially with the bridge. With the neck, however, you can pretty much play with it sort of wide open. So there you can see the, the sort of more wide open sound um, and you can have, so you know I've got, to, I've got to really toy with this, you can raise and lower the pickups which I haven't done, um, the way this is constructed you've got a, a little um, um, flathead screwdriver for um, lowering and raising each pole piece so that's a really beautiful design, it's, a, it's an incredible design, it's really over engineered um, and I would say it's the most beautifully designed pickup I've ever seen. And you could argue that it's it's just got that cool rockabilly, you know. If you're that kind of in in between. So it's just got that great in between. Like I said, I've got to fiddle a little bit with the pickups to just, you know, maybe get rid of some of that treble off the bridge. But all in all, it's an incredible sound. I would really highly recommend you guys to, if you get a guitar or build a guitar like I have, you know, I, I got the neck from somewhere. I got the body from MJT. Or Robert Gilmore gave, bought, um, built me the neck. I got these pickups, you know, the Gretsch Bixby, whatever. You know, you have it like a little design concept and then you can build this guitar. There's nothing more satisfying, in my opinion, than building your own Telecaster. Um, this is, called, of course, called the Goosecaster. But you know what I mean? You know, you just, you know, have an idea of how you want the guitar to, um, to sound and, and what pickups. And then just build the thing yourself. It's not too hard. Maybe sometimes you've got to get, you know, the guitar set up and maybe routed um, in the shop. But apart from that, you can do everything else yourself. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a really, really nice thing. This guitar took seven years <laughs> to appear as it does now because when I first bought it, it was a standard Telecaster with normal pickups. And then gradually I changed it over the years. And when I could afford these pickups and, and, and had the time, you know, it's had a few different pickups in it. Um, I put a Bixby on, then I took it off. And then I decided I liked it, so I put it back on. And, you know, so it's just a really nice experiment until you get something that you're really, really happy with. Um, and then you can get a neck maybe made for you with the right shape in it um, and the right frets and you know just hone the guitar into into what you see as a perfect guitar you know um, so that's really the fun of it the fun for me is a kind of do-it-yourself attitude and building your own guitar I can't tell you guys how great it feels to have a guitar that you find you've built yourself it's great to go and buy an off-the-shelf guitar nothing wrong with that but if you can build one yourself you know it's your it's personally it's a very personal thing for you it's going to be like nothing else so keep that in mind guys you know 
Um, okay, guys, take care. This has been Coffee Chat with Goose, and uh, speak soon. Take care.